here to be here, no? Okay, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I take this as a kind of opportunity for me to talk to people who are really not mature than me because uh, I can remember uh, Professor Susanta Gurathilaka some time ago when I was a student who is doing this in field at the Open University. Uh, it was about 15, I was 16, more than actually 15, about 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago. So then uh, you know, I anyway, uh, look mature than me a lot. Right. Uh, actually, I was in fact uh, thinking that I will get a kind of uh, audience where there are a lot of uh, students who are just uh, beginning to understand this subject of philosophy here. Today I am talking, uh, it's very important actually, I am not a person who had done philosophy as a course. So I never, I was never taught by somebody what is philosophy and so on, but uh, for some reasons which I am going to explain very soon, uh, I was interested in this area of philosophy. Uh, so then I think that uh, my interest will be of use for other people, especially the younger generation, to think of the importance of this area of philosophy of science uh, in particular when I am going to talk it sometime later. Uh, so then, uh, in this context, actually, uh, I really want to emphasize the fact that uh, in my life, uh, especially when I want to work as a researcher, uh, the tremendous impact I got from the thoughts coming from philosophy, uh, my research in this computer science or artificial intelligence area has a very big uh, influence uh, from the knowledge that I gather from this area of philosophy. So then uh, I will show you my lineup here. Uh, so then I want to give you a little introduction and uh, by how I develop the interest in philosophy area, uh, then philosophy especially in connection with the research, uh, then two ideas actually which were really very much helpful for me to uh, think of uh, doing research, especially this uh, Karl Popper and the this uh, Thomas Kuhn ideas about falsification and paradigm shift things. Then more importantly this cultural relevance for philosophy and uh, sometime actually one might think uh, from where this philosophy basically come. So at that point actually I would say uh, the culture has a strong bearing on this part and seeds of major philosophies and philosophy of science, actually last one would be the topic for my next lecture which will be coming in two weeks time. So I will be discussing basically the first uh, few bullets here today. Then uh, as I said at the very beginning, uh, I am from science background and I actually never learned philosophy as a subject. So then you, one might think actually why you are so interested in this area. So then I am going to disclose these uh, important points. Uh, some are actually already known to my students and the colleagues. Uh, uh, in fact, a uh, person like Dr. Nalin Ran Singh, uh, then the Ruan and uh, we were colleagues in the context of computer science rather than philosophy, but somehow we have some common interest about this area. So then I think that is why I am here today to have a discussion of this nature in front of you. So, Again, actually, I should say that I am not a researcher in philosophy. That is very important because if I am a researcher in philosophy, I must have done some contribution to philosophy, which I am not doing. And in a way, I am a kind of beneficiary. So then I have been benefited by philosophical thoughts of other people. So the little philosophy that I knew made a very big uh, change in my life. The way actually I thought about the research, and I, in particular, actually started to appreciate the research in areas other than science because there was a time I thought that uh, scientific research are the biggest thing. But later on, again, I realized that why not so early? So when the scientists actually chop some leaves of a plant and extract some juice and tell that this contains cyanide or arsenic or whatever, in biology, actually, we accept it as research. 
exactly the same process will take place if a person goes through a lot of books in the library, maybe something related to a particular area, maybe history. So then after that, if you figure out this kind of thoughts had been there and uh, the whole idea of this thinking at that time is this, that is very similar to extracting the juice from plants. So then that is also research. Uh, so then to clean my mind about this scientific research are better than other research, actually that philosophical thoughts which I learned would have been very much beneficial for me. So then uh, here I want to share my thoughts and experience with you, uh, how I was interested in philosophy as a person who is not in philosophy area. As you all know in Sri Lanka also, uh, in our science faculties, we never teach philosophy of science for our students. But philosophy of science has been the subject for students in the art faculties. So then uh, we who are in the science, we really don't know what is philosophy of science, any importance of philosophy of science and so on. So then uh, I think uh, you will have some kind of, uh, you will be able to develop some kind of enthusiasm after I give my uh, road map about the gathering of information about the philosophy area. Uh, you all are actually experts in this uh, area, so you have done philosophy maybe as a subject and you have been teaching philosophy and you are doing research about philosophy. So something anyway, in a way, to my words, uh, it's a kind of encyclopedia, he can remember almost everything. I think he can remember very well once he hear or read something. So then I am talking in you know, audience actually, people of that caliber. Uh, so then uh, let me start how I develop my interest. Uh, late 1980s actually. I can remember I was struggling to understand the meaning of the terms doing the research. I was doing an MPhil at that time. I did not have any idea how to do this MPhil. I originally started to do MPhil research in this wave energy area with Professor Arjuna uh, Soisa from Open University. But later on, actually, I switched into uh, one day, uh, Professor Yanand had noticed that I have been preparing some notes for uh, teaching at Dahampa Sal on the topic of Abhidharma. So then they have some flowcharts and all kind of diagrams. And so Sriyananda convinced me that actually you must have done your research in this area because you have natural interest in that. So then I switch into... Uh, to just one says, why not explain what Abhidharma is? Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, actually, Abhidharma is a kind of uh, area in the Buddhism uh, where it talks about the modeling of mind and so on. So then it gives various models of how these thought processes and how the mind work as a sequence of uh, thought processes. And I was basically involved in developing a model for uh, this computer model basically to describe the concept of thought process in Buddhism. At that time actually I used Pascal language. I did not have much sophisticated languages also. So I was new to Buddhism. I was new to research. All these things were really very new for me. So as a result of that, even though I am doing the research, I was not very clear about what I was doing. So then uh, Dr. Susanta like people come to me, came to all these presentations and they give various ideas. Still, I was not very sure. Somehow, in 1992, I completed my MPhil degree and I got the degree. 